Hey guys, I, I, uh, I'm i going to try to do this a little different today and uh, hopefully this all works out. I uh, yesterday did a uh, YouTube live and went pretty well. So we're going to do another one today. And in this one, um, I had done a video where we had talked about we were going to critique some of the heating and air systems. If you guys want to send me pictures and this, uh, I had a couple guys kind of take a little offense to it. One guy was like, well, what makes you think you're the end all? And, and I don't think I am. I, more than anything, if you're a homeowner, I want you to kind of see what we're talking about or looking for when a, uh, you know, one guy says, if a heating and air guy says, well, this is a good install versus this one where it's a bad install. Um, and uh, what, what we're kind of looking for, what we're talking about. So uh, bear with me. I'm trying to get my sh screen shared here. And hopefully uh, this uh, works well here. Okay, we are in my, my Gmail account. This is the account that we set up for this. And hopefully you can see me. I'm still here. I'm down here. Uh, but anyway, so I wanted to uh, go through some of these. Uh, one thing that was pretty cool, this this first email that I actually got uh, from Mark Miguel Meal. Sorry if I'm not saying that right. I, I don't know if Mark's on here with us or not. But he sent me a couple pictures that the company he actually works for uh, did. And so we're going to go through this on well, just a few things that jumped out at me. Again, this is not about me trying to bash other companies or anything like that. Um, one thing would be, it's sort of like if, uh, you know, if you, I don't know if you're cleaning a room, right? So if one guy does cleans a room and another guy cleans another room, well, we could both probably go in the other room and find something wrong, right? Uh, whereas this, uh, you know, the, whoever did this install could probably go behind me on one of my installs and find something that they would have done better. Uh, so he sent me the before and after pictures, which I, I appreciate. So I can actually see, this is the old system here, the old outdoor unit. And here is the old indoor unit. So it looks like it's in the homeowners using this as a gym. And so you can kind of see some dumbbells here. And it looks like it was sitting on a wooded plenum. Uh, but check out this old air handler. It's, it definitely was seeing better days before they got it replaced. So um, sorry, I'm trying to scroll up and not zoom in. And it's there we go. Uh. So a couple of things that I that jumped out at me with the new install that I wanted to go through. One thing was I noticed that they kept the wooden plenum. Now they did a new one and the new one looks pretty good. Um, but I uh, was surprised that they stayed with that. You know, if they if they removed the old one, um, you know, they could have went with a a metal plenum, a duct plenum. And they chose not to, which is fine. But I just, one thing that I noticed there. Um, I will say that a lot of this does, it look, it does look neat. They did a good job with the line sets here and the drain. I also see that they insulated the drain. Um, so this, this uh, garage looking, you know, it's, it looks like a garage that they've turned into a gym. So there's a, a garage door over here. And maybe the room itself is not heated and cooled, which by code is fine, by, by the way. Um, I'm not sure an inspector would have loved seeing this wooden plenum, being that it's not airtight. Um, you know, you could even, you could argue that it is airtight, but being that it's not, you know, if it was metal, we would have put mastic on it and made sure it was good and clear, um, you know, being that it's in the garage, it could have failed inspection, by the way. I just wanted to note that. Um, I'm surprised the original one, if this is the original one that was here when they built the house, I'm surprised that it passed 
you know, because of the same reason. But, uh, and, and so, you know, the, the whole thinking behind that is if, if it is a garage by code, you would have to have a separate heating and air system because there is a chance that carbon monoxide could come into your home um, when you have, you know, it connected to the garage as well. So uh, the good thing is they did not, they don't have any, you know, supply vents coming off of the supply duct. But uh, being that, you know, it's, it's possible that this is not completely airtight here, being a wooden plenum. Again, they, they might argue differently. And who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe this is just a wooden, maybe this isn't a wooden plenum. Maybe this is just a wooden box that they built around the metal plenum, um, which I highly doubt based on what I'm seeing. But it's possible that, you know, that that's what they did, that this is just a wooden box built around the metal plenum that is that is completely airtight. So just something to point out there. Uh, but like I say, this is all looks really neat. You know, they did they did a good job for the most part. You know, you could argue they could have done better, whatever. But for the most part, uh, it looks neat. Um, they've got their sticker here for the UV light. So that's good. At least I believe that's what that is. And uh and all that. Now let's talk about the outdoor unit because that there are a few things that jumped out at me with this. I apparently I guess there's some states where this is normal with this metal channel that they that they use, and which is fine. Uh, but in Virginia, I don't see a lot of that. So we would have used something called Slim Duct, which is a vinyl cover, and it just to me it looks nicer. Um, but you know, it is what it is at this point. And, you know, they reused that, you know, so if you go back here to the old system, they, it, there was one there, you know, so they either reuse that or it actually looks like they did replace that as well. So this was removed because it's painted here. And then the new one that's installed is the galvanized metal. But that said, uh, I personally in Virginia, I would have preferred to see uh, a vinyl uh, you know, slim duct more, you know, to me, that would have been more cosmetically pleasing. I'm probably splitting hairs. Um, but one thing that jumps out about me about this jumps out about me about this, that jumps out at me about this is the fact that this unit is sitting in front of this window. I'm not in love with that. Now, again, you could argue my guys will do that to me sometimes. I'll be like, Hey, don't do that. And they'll be like, well, that's how the old one was. <laughs> and I'll say, I don't care how the old one was. The old one, just like this, uh, this one in the garage was not, shouldn't have passed code to start with. And now you're doing something again that I would not have done. So I don't know what this window is. I don't know if this is a, you know, a bedroom or a living room, a kitchen, wh whatever it is. Uh, I typically would not want to see the unit right in front of a unit. Like, I mean, right in front of a window like that. Uh, Uh, sorry, my guys are texting me. But there's also, it appears there is a dryer vent right here, which is not ideal. Um, I would not want to see the outdoor unit, you know, near the dryer vent. You know, lint will fly out of that and it could get attached to this coil, makes it get dirty a, a lot quicker. And I would have liked to seen that you know, if possible, if they could have moved that. Um, the other thing is, you know, here's the electric, here's the, uh, you know, where the line sets were. I, this picture doesn't tell me what's, on, you know, to the right here. So if we're standing right in front of this unit, what's to the right over here? Um, but, you know, I, I probably would have moved it further down this house to the right. Get, I would have tried to get away from this dryer vent. And I would have, you know, if, even if I had to, run um a uh you know a new electrical connection or whatever i would have done that but other than that you know the the whoever these installers are you know i can nitpick here and there i probably would have strapped the uh seal tight here to the uh to the uh line sets a little bit but you know they've got good bins and you know it does look like whoever did this was taking a moment to try to make things look nice. So that's, uh, that's good.
Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about some of these questions, uh, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat over here. So feel free to go ahead and chat um, on this. Hopefully I can see it. All messages you will send will appear publicly. Yep. So hopefully uh, this is the first time I've used StreamYard to do something like this. So hopefully I'll see your chats if you were to post something. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Again, I'm not here to try to pick on other companies or other technicians. We could both do an install and they could find something wrong with mine. And I, you know, I could find something wrong with theirs. But my goal is to help folks, uh, homeowners, see what we're seeing when we say somebody could have done a better job with this install. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out, and we're going to talk more about uh, this in a moment, but just real quick. Uh, if you see, here's the old heat pump system with this one we were just looking at. Here's a bush right up next to it. And that's sometimes something to consider as well. It doesn't look like it's super close to the old one here. Um, and it does look like they cut it back in with the new one, which is great. Uh, a lot of folks aren't even mindful of that. So these guys were mindful of that. But it's something you definitely want to tell the homeowner, hey, you need to keep this bush cut back you know, at least 12 to 18 inches, because if it gets next to that unit and let's just say, for example, it was, you know, close, if it was impeding air on one side of this unit and this unit has four sides, then you've just now taken a, let's say it's a four ton outdoor unit and you made it a three ton unit. It can't have enough air. The air can't pass through one side of that coil, if that makes sense. So, um, So uh, anyway, uh, moving on to this next one. So this fella sent me pictures of his old unit, which is fine. Uh, Mr. Gilmore, Doug Gilmore. Uh, so I'm going to ignore some of the stuff, but he's, he's obviously in a state where they use the same metal um, channel. You know, again, I don't see that a lot in Virginia. Um but, you know, I am, you know, it looks like he's doing a good job keeping his shrubbery cut back. But, you know, here's here's a few that are up against it. And you might say, well, it's just a little bit there. Um, the EPA came out with a uh, with an article years ago or some findings where they basically said for every quarter inch of dust that collects on your unit, your utility bill goes up ten dollars a year. And you might say, well, you know, that's just, you know, ten bucks. Right. But, you know. I, I filter that through the same lens. So when I see shrubbery starting to get against that unit and that airs, you know, it's having to work harder to perform uh, the same, then, um, you know, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, that said, uh, I am not in love with, you know, again, this is an older system. You know, this thing's been here a while. Um, he did send me a, the name plate. So, uh, looks like this is a 2005 carrier. And um, so that said, you know, this has been here a while. But even with that said, I would, if I was doing a tune up to this system, I, I would clean up some of this stuff. I would definitely want to see this low voltage wire here strapped a little better. And I would probably replace this. Uh, well, no, I know I would uh, now that I'm zooming in this arm flex on this suction line needs to be replaced. So it looks dry rotted and, you know, every little bit helps, you know, get that replaced, get that thing insulated well. And uh, if nothing else, it'll look better, but you know, it could help with some of your efficiencies and stuff, you know, especially on a really hot day. I don't know what state this is in, but on a super hot day, but you know, this unit uh, looks like it's uh, you know, he's gotten his money's worth out of this unit. The uh, top here is nice and rusty. And, uh, you know, but I'm no psychic. He could get another five years out of this. I don't know. You know, that's the, the hope and dream, right? Um, so this guy sent me a pictures of his ducted Mitsubishi inverter unit. There's not a lot I can see in this, uh, in this picture here, but you know, we've got the, uh, Mitsubishi outdoor unit and they matched it with an air handler. So, that's something that a lot of folks don't know about Mitsubishi. 
Uh, but they've been doing for a few years now, quite a few years, that you can in, in, you can get a system with a, you know, an outdoor unit that's a side discharge, still blows out the front. And this all looks nice and clean. Uh, again, I can't see the connections. Uh, but then when you come in here to the indoor unit, they've got the, you know, a, just a regular upflow looking air handler. And uh, one thing that's unique about uh, Mitsubishi and trains, you know, now that they've, they've all partnered together is uh, you'll see at times where the blower here is on the return side of the coil. So the coils in this part right here and the blowers down here, and that's actually unique. It makes it a positive pressure unit. Um, whereas most other brands, the blower would be in this area and the coil would be on the return side of the blower. So just something, just one little tidbit for you there. That said, just looking at this picture, uh, it's again, it's, it, this is a clean looking install. Um, whoever did this, you know, you could tell they were, you know, making good bends uh, with their joints. Uh, by code, this wiring right here uh, would have failed. You know, they want to see that strapped through the wall there. You know, whenever you have a Romex, uh, they want to see it strapped within so many inches of the box. And um, so that's one thing to point out. Um, there is a P-trap here, but again, this is a positive pressure. So I, I will see a lot of train guys um, or even, you know, Mitsubishi guys, they'll uh, not put a P-trap but, you know, they've got an easy trap there. I, I, I don't have a lot to say about this particular install. They did a good job. Everything looks nice and clean. Um, and, uh, you know, they did, they did a pretty good job. They've got a secondary float switch, an easy trap, all good things. I don't know where in the house this is located, but it's definitely, you know, it's not in an attic or a crawl space. So, you know, it's good having these float switches and things like that in place. So that way, you know, your system will turn off. Um, let's see. Mr. Conley sent me pictures of his. This looks like an, an older unit as well, which is totally fine. Um, and uh, one thing that does jump out at me right away is this. Uh, they, they've got this old uh, PVC pipe here. Um, it's not the end of the world, but I have seen these where if they're, you know, if they're not strapped well, the fan uh, can hit those. And uh, I actually had one years ago where it was turned a certain way and water was being able to go in the pipe all the way down and get into the electrical housing. So it was just dumping water inside where the electrical components were. Um other than that, you know, just sta standard older system that we're looking at here. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Conley had something specific that he wanted me to uh, see where Elvis Mann commented Florida. So maybe he's talking about one of these other ones that we looked at. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, uh, again, this is another one that they've obviously gotten their money's worth. Um, looks like... Mm, one of the games I like to play with my wife is we'll guess the brand sometimes. This one's tough. Uh, I'm wondering if it's an old Janitrol type system with the way this, this side over here looks, but you guys don't care <laughs> what brand it is. Um, but I'd, I'd be curious what brand uh, it is to see if I'm accurate. Maybe a Nordon unit, but it's definitely not, you know, train or, or carrier or any of those guys just from the way that looks. Um, okay. And here we go. Mr. Conley sent a few other pictures. So he sent me pictures of, looks like the line sets down in there, maybe the copper lines. So he didn't really say anything with his, with his pictures, which is fine, but I'm not sure, you know, if there's anything else he wanted me to look at. Uh, Oh, here we go. So this is from Vicki Conley. So this is Mr. Conley's 
maybe his significant other. I hope you review my pictures as one of your reviews. My heat pump is 15 years old, and I've maintained a maintenance program for the entire 15 years. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Mark, I mean, it looks like you've gotten your money's worth, pal. Uh, and I think I was right. This is an old Janitrol and or Goodman unit. Um, so kudos to me for guessing that. Uh, but that said, uh, I uh, just like the other ones we were talking about, I would definitely get this Armaflex replaced here. I would want to see all this stuff strapped up a little better. Um, I don't see a lot of weeds in here, but if somebody were to bring a weed whacker in here or if they were to you know, try to even walk through here, maybe they needed, needed to get back here and clean up some of the leaves or something or clean out this downspout or something like that. You know, sometimes when I see low voltage wiring just kind of hanging there, it's possible for somebody to kind of catch their foot on that or whatever. And I always like to strap it. If you want to get super technical, I like to strap it on the bottom side of everything. So that way it gets baked by the sun the least. And, uh, you know, it's not sitting on the top of the unit there. Uh, you know, so he's kind of just hidden down under. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like Mr. Mr. Conley's gotten his money's worth out of this system. There's not a lot for me to say, you know, other than that. Um, I did, as you can see, it's got my name over here. I did go ahead and start sending some pictures of some systems to myself because I wanted to do this live. I thought it would be helpful. And um, I wasn't getting as many pictures as I thought I would. I got, you know, got a few people there. But I thought just for this video, we would go through a few more pictures that I was able to send to myself from either Facebook groups that I'm in or uh, pictures on the Internet. And that way you can kind of see what I'm seeing. So, you know, here's a unit that this is a new unit um, that they installed. And um, a couple of things just kind of jumped out. I, I, uh, I think this is a good looking install for the most part. I would have liked to see you know, a strap put on uh, the wall here. Um, I don't think there's too many uh, electrical co uh, code inspectors that would have, you know, liked to see that seal tight, just kind of, you know, zip tied to the um, line sets like that. And, you know, as years go on, those zip ties aren't going to be there forever anyway. You know, you could argue that, but, you know, inspectors want what they want. But the thing that really jumped out at me about this picture, you know, it's a nice looking unit. They did good with their line sets and the and the uh, the seal tight, but they reused the old disconnected appears. And you can see that appears to me to be Romex and that is not up to code. So that Romex should not be exposed to the outside. It's against code. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, I'm going to zip through some of these pictures. But again, I just wanted to see that. I took, I jumped this one in there just the same um, because there's no strap there. And then the other thing that jumps out at me about this particular picture, again, this is a newer looking system, but they, it doesn't appear from this picture that there's a lot of clearance. I did a whole video years ago where, you know, I talked about how much clearance you need to have between an outdoor unit and, you know, shrubs or walls or whatever. Uh, so that way it gets a, proper amount of airflow and so it can do what it's supposed to do it doesn't have to overwork itself and you have things break down uh, and then of course we just talked about it with the last picture and here is the low voltage cable again just kind of hanging here all it takes is for somebody to be you know if they walk around this unit and they're going to try to trim this bush over here so like let's say one of the branches is sticking out behind the unit so they're going to take a step over all of this and all of a sudden their foot catches on that low voltage that's just dangling right there. I would have liked to seen that it, you know, run on the bottom side of all of this and nice and strapped. And, you know, so that way that would never happen. I don't know, just a little pet peeve of mine. Um, but, you know, whatever state this is in, they've got snow legs here. And, uh, you know, overall looks looks fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's an air handler, and uh, and I apologize if I missed something. I'm just trying to zip through these real quick, guys, and, uh, you know, again, just to kind of help you see a few things, but um, let's see. Got it. Okay. So, you know, this is not a that horrible looking of a unit. Um, I feel like it could have been done a little nicer, but I think the main thing that really jumps out about 
really jumps out at me about this particular install as I look at this um, is the fact that whoever installed this was not thinking about maintenance in the future. So they ran the line sets right in front of the doors here. And, you know, whoever has to come, you know, some someday they might have to come back and replace this blower motor. Well, to get to that, it's going to be a bear. You know, they're going to have to kind of bend these uh, line sets out of the way, pull that thing out and get that motor replaced. So that that was the main thing that jumped out at me. It could have been done. It's, it's you know, in comparison to some of the other ones we've already looked at, it could have, could have definitely been, you know, done a little nicer, a little less sloppy. But that's the main thing that jumps out at me about this particular one. Uh, this one we talked about just a second ago. There's very little clearance around it. Um, you know, and I, you might say, well, you know, he didn't have a lot of choice. Look how big that unit is. He has choices. You know, they, they could have installed a uh, side discharge unit these days and they don't require as much clearance. And uh, we also have, you know, line sets here that it looks like they just went through a, uh, an, <clears throat> a basement window or something here. It's kind of an odd setup. They brought the electrical out the same way. Um, not strapped, you know, so here's the seal tight and they just kind of got it wedged behind the vinyl siding here. And then they brought the line sets out the same place. So pretty sloppy, to be honest with you. Um, I would not want to see one of my guys do that. Uh, again, you know, look at this long whip that they've got here. I would have cut that back, probably strapped it to my line sets here. And, uh, you know, again, it's a little sloppy, and, uh, and it would have failed code for that matter because it's not strapped here to the wall either. So um, the other thing I wanted, the reason I sent this picture is it has the wall brackets, you know. So in some states, this is becoming a thing where they'll actually put even large trash can style uh, outdoor units and they'll put them on these wall brackets. Um, and then finally... Uh, I threw this picture in there. I found this one on the internet as well. Um, and it looks, you know, pretty sloppy, obviously. And it actually appears, and I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, they've got the wall brackets here and it appears that this line set has been kinked at some point. You know, this thing might have used to come out a little bit before it went down and someone, you know, hung on it or got hit by something. I don't know. There. I could be wrong on that, but it just appears that way because of the, even the way this liquid line looks kind of. So uh, just pretty sloppy, to be honest with you. Just, you know, again, is it working? You know, probably, but it just, it's just kind of sloppy. You know, we want, we, we want to take pride in our work and want those to look fine. Uh, I took this picture. Here's a couple, it almost looks like some of those old Armstrong units, but, uh, or, Actually, this might be train now that I'm looking at the top. But um, these uh, these are set way too close to one another. A uh, lot of the, if you look at an install manual for a heat pump system, it'll have clearances, you know, from shrubbery and walls, but it'll also say how far away it needs to be from other heating and air systems. Um, if it's not in there, if you just for some weird reason have a unit that they do not have the clearances then I would definitely say a minimum of 12 inches, 12 to 18 inches um, if, if I don't have something to go by. Same thing in this picture, got a whole bunch of units. Uh, it's hard, it's really hard to tell in this picture <clears throat> how close they actually are. But, you know, this big Goodman unit certainly looks like it's pretty close to that wall back there. And so why do you care if you're a homeowner? Well, the reason is you just paid, you know, for a, two ton system and you're only getting a ton and a half because one of the sides is being restricted. You know, it's got not getting enough air across that coil. So this one today, uh, a guy had posted this and a couple things jumped out at me. It's uh, actually in comparison, not a bad looking install compared to a lot of other installs that I see, but uh, a couple things kind of jumped out at me. Uh, the first thing being, we just talked about the whips so you see the whip here is just kind of hanging and dangling and same with the low voltage here. Um, I would have liked to see that strapped a little, you know, a little better. Um, we're going to get back to the shroud in just a second, but <clears throat> looks like they reused the gas line here. And in fact, I think I have a picture. Yeah. Here, so here's a picture of the old unit that he replaced. So 
is it better than the old unit? Uh, you know, it looks better than the old unit where they just did a little shield here. And then the ductwork back here is completely exposed to the elements. Um, so they don't have an actual shroud there. But other than that, you know, at least on the old unit, it appears that the uh, that the whip was strapped. You know, it wasn't strapped to the house, but you know, strapped there. So they reused the lot, the uh, gas line, which is fine. But you know, it's rusty. It doesn't look the best. I probably would have, you know, I don't know, thrown a coat of paint on there. Um, there's no P trap in the uh, drain here. Uh, why do you care? Why would you care if you're a homeowner? Um, there's a couple of reasons for that, but the main reason is uh, it can actually pull unfiltered air through that unit. So whenever I have an outdoor package unit like that, I like for there to be a P-trap in there um, for that reason. But, you know, P-traps in general, you know, you can have critters and all kinds of things climb up in that system and we want to get a P-trap on there. Um, and then the last thing uh, before we get to the shroud is it looks like they set bricks on the ground and then set a pad. Hopefully that lasts, but I I don't know that I would have done it that way. I, I would have, uh, you know, tried to come up with something a little more permanent. And, uh, you know, it looks fine. It actually, you know, looks better than than some. But, um, you know, that unit is, is in pretty sad shape there. Uh, it, or that unit could get in sad shape. Sorry, I'm trying to look at two things at once. The final thing is I wanted to, wanted to show you is this shroud. And in comparison, I've seen a lot worse. You know, it's a nice new looking shroud. And, you know, they've they've obviously put a lot of work into it. But, um, you know, the, the one thing I will say, the positive is they've got it at a slope here and it is sloping away from the house. So if rain hits this, it'll slope away from the house. The problem is they've brought the shroud all the way up here to the top of the unit versus down where we would normally do it. And uh, maybe they did that because of the way the old one was. I don't know. I mean, you kind of see the old one was that way, kind of, sort of. But the real issue with that is if you ever need to do any repair to this and you need to remove this top, uh, that shroud is going to be a hindrance to do that. Whereas if they would have just installed it correctly or normal, uh, I shouldn't say correctly, but the way we would have installed it, where the top of the unit would have been down here, uh, top of the shroud rather, then it wouldn't be hindering the unit at all. You know, you'd be able to do your repair, pull that top off if you needed to check that heat exchanger or uh, replace a coil or whatever the reason is you need to remove the top. You'd be able to do that easily. So just a couple things jumped out at me there um, with that one. Here's a air handler that I sent to myself <laughs> for this. And um, the, uh, you know, the thing that probably jumps out at me the most with this is, uh, you know, there's certainly ways that, you know, that they could have done. I can't even see the drain back here. So it could be good, could be bad. Uh, I would think that there's probably not a P-trap if I'm not seeing it easily there. So they just plumbed it out, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, but the main thing that jumped out at me about this one is I, I personally wonder if it would have been better to just do what, what we call a closet air handler. You know, one of those wall hung closet air handlers because they built a stand here. They've got it in a closet here and, you know, they, they've got this, big air handler there where they might have gotten by with just a closet air handler. Now, if you do like a, one of these newer, you know, inverter systems and you, you know, to make an AHRI match, you, your options are limited. Well, then, you know, your options are limited. Uh, let's see. Oh, let me come back to that. Okay, good. All right, so now we're up here. Uh, this one I had to send to myself because that the the things that I'm seeing wrong with this one are all over the place. So the first thing uh, that I see is you know you've got this unit; it's set way out from the house, which is fine. 
Uh, they've got it set between the two windows. You know, I guess I would have rather seen that than in front of one of the windows. But they've got it in front of these electrical components. Now, I don't know if this is a temporary service. It, it you know, I'm, I'm just guessing that it is. For some reason, they've, you know, they've, they've disconnected it up here. And then it looks like maybe they set a new meter base or meter. I'm not sure really what's going on here with all of that. But I can tell you that uh, it may not meet code for this, first of all, for this electrical panel to be behind this unit. Um, and so that inspector might come through and fail this. Uh, the unit certainly looks new. This looks like maybe a, a pane or, or something like that, a carrier type product sitting out here. Um, but it's set way out from the house and you've got all this stuff going on behind it. And then you've got these line sets run exposed up the wall. And maybe they're going to, you know, maybe they, whoever did this, if they happen to see this, maybe they might come back and say, well, I was, you know, I wasn't done. I was going to put, put some slim duct in there, which I highly doubt. But if they were to come back and say that, then, you know, my rebuttal would be, well, then, you know, let's go ahead and drill a nice clean looking hole to get into that attic instead of going through this uh, gable vent or whatever the word is, I, you know, gables. I'm not sure if that's considered a gable or not. I'm not a, a builder, but whatever whatever that vent is into the attic, um, they, you know, just ran it through there. You know, it's kind of lazy to be honest with you and, and um, very sloppy looking. So I thought I'd show you that. Uh, furnace. Uh, I wanted to show you this because this is one of the ones that I thought that I came across. I said, you know, this is actually a nice looking install. So, you know, kudos to them. Um, I am going to point out one thing to you in just a moment. But I didn't want, you know, if somebody came across this video to say, well, it's just all, you know, Josh is just pointing out all these things that are wrong. Um, you know, why don't we see some things that are correct? And I would say, you know, the gas line looks nice and clean. Um, the uh, drains, all, you know, everything looks pretty good with that. Um, I probably would have liked to seen maybe a vent right here for it to drain better down into this condensate pump but I'm probably splitting hairs there. Other than that, you know, apparently in this state or area, they like to mark their exhaust and air intake. All that looks good. They've got a April air filter down here. That looks good. You know, all this stuff. The only thing that I would probably point out is here it is from another angle is I would be very surprised. You've got this gigantic plenum and a uh, whole house home filter. You know, that's probably like a, you know, probably 20, 20 some inches deep and, uh, <clears throat> you know, probably, you know, I don't know, 18 inches tall, 16 inches tall, whatever it is. Uh, but then they, it appears, and, I, and again, I'm, I don't have my measuring tape in this picture, but it appears that this return is rather small. And I would say that for, for a lot of these guys that do nice looking work, that is where they fall short the most, you know, they'll do some very nice looking work and, but they never, you know, pull out a duculator and do it correctly. So that, that's probably the biggest thing that jumped out at me. You know, if we're just using, you know, just this picture as a reference, I would assume that this plenum is probably a 16 by, you know, 24 inches deep. You know, I'm just guessing, but 16, 24. And, you know, so then that, if you were to use that as a reference, then this is probably eight inches right here. And then, you know, only, you know, 20 inches this way. So I don't have my duculator on me, but depending on what size furnace this is, that would probably be an undersized return. Um, I see that probably more than anything in our industry where guys just don't size their ductwork correctly. Uh, here looks, looks like a hairy homeowner special. They uh, probably got this unit online and did not know how to uh, install the line sets correctly, you know, cut them back and, and all that stuff. So they, um, so they, you know, just left the excess line sets and then reconnected it there. So you know, I thought that was kind of funny looking. Um, it looks like they ran their communication cable, which is fine, but they ran that in seal tight. So maybe this wasn't a homeowner. Maybe this is just a, um, I don't, you know, if this is a heating and air guy, I'm, ver I'm very surprised that, you know, he did not cut this back and then 
reflare his uh, copper there. Uh, here we go. Somebody just just sent this to me today. Awesome. Thank you. Um, did I go through all these pictures? I did. Okay. All right. Uh, so it looks like Mr. Eberhardt sent me some pictures here. So great. Thanks, uh, Mr. Eberhardt. We're going to go through these. Uh, got a Honeywell 9000 here. My only problem with the 9000s is there is no way to control. So if this is a heat pump system, I haven't got there yet. But if this is a heat pump system, uh, there's no way to control that backup heat stage uh, at all. You know, there's no timer on it uh, unless they've changed something. I know the old 9000s, you couldn't control it. And so a lot of times it, it was running too much. You know, it was bringing on the auxiliary heat way too often. And they were having, um, you know, ha high electric bills because of it. Uh, the Other than that, the 9000s are cool looking. I, you know, I've installed them for uh, folks um that you know i could think of one homeowner in particular that he just liked how they looked you know he found them online and he said hey i ordered a couple nine thousands online will you come put them in and he was you know actually a friend of mine so i went and put them in um so wherever this is it's it looks like it not only was snow there but they took this picture while snow was falling so uh pretty crazy uh because we're depending on where mr eberhardt is I'm looking out the window and, you know, we're at almost 80 degrees today. So here in Virginia, which we're still at the beginning of spring, kind of, sort of. Well, midway through spring. Other than that, um, we've already talked about before. I would like to see this strapped a little better. The seal tight is just kind of hanging there. Uh, I don't, unless I'm missing something, I don't see any straps there. Line sets look good. You know, they did nice bends here. Um, I can't tell. Uh, actually that, that might be a, a 90 that they put in there. So they didn't even bend the line sets. They added a 90. So that's fine. As long as everything was nice and tight and they braced properly. Um, and then I guess the only other thing is I would have liked to seen this, um, low voltage cable run on the bottom side of my line sets and strapped, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm splitting hairs there, but, um, that's just kind of like a little pet peeve of mine. So, um, let's see. Not much to see in this picture other than it's got the big D on it. Daikin. Um, and it looks like we've, is this a mobile home? It's hard to tell in the picture, but I think it is. We got underpinning here. So that means they paired that with a, uh, a mobile home furnace here. And uh, at least in Virginia, I can tell you that if they did do a 9,000 here and I would have liked to seen a, a heat pump installed, we see all the time here. And again, I'm talking about here in Virginia. I just had a conversation with a guy on here. Um, hey, Mark, I see, I see where you commented. Um, I, uh, I had a conversation with a guy a couple weeks ago and he said, well, we're in the Dakotas and it's super cold here. So we don't do heat pumps at all, you know, which was fine. But here in Virginia, it's a lot of times when they do manufactured housing and they'll do a mobile home furnace, they'll put a straight AC outside and they're basically putting in the absolute bare minimum. They're putting in the least sear air conditioning unit, not a heat pump outside. They'll put the least expensive mobile home furnace in and, you know, they're just getting by with the minimums there. And we've had customers that when we went in to replace, you know, here we are 10, 20 years later, and we're now going to replace that uh, furnace. We'll go ahead and put a heat pump in outside and their electric bills drop dramatically, dramatically. I did a whole video on that. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe six months ago, but uh you know, all you don't have to install an inverter system or get super crazy just by swapping that straight AC for a heat pump outside with a mobile home furnace. Their electric bills just drop dramatically. Um, like we're talking hundreds of dollars. So this doesn't this doesn't become a debate between SEER anymore. Just installing a, a heat pump versus straight AC, uh, big time difference. Uh not a lot to see in the in these pictures. 
I do like that there's filters there in front of the doors. A lot of these mobile home furnaces, there is no place to install a filter. They'll, they'll literally have louvers in the front of the uh, furnace like that. And then there won't be any filter. You know, they'll, they'll expect you to get a, a coil with some sort of mesh filter on top of it. So um, this is actually really nice looking. I don't know if they came like this or if this was something added. But uh, this is a good looking, you know, little filter rack that they've installed. And it's got these washable filters here. Um, so I like seeing that. But other than that, there's not a lot to see in this picture. Um, I do see some wires here. So, you know, you could argue that that could be cleaned up a little nicer. But other than that, you know, that's that's pretty much it with that. Um, the other thing that we've done, I'll just throw this out before we wrap up with our live video here. Um, that's my system. You're yep. Nor, so Mr. Eberhard, you're the guy I was talking to. Um, the one thing I'll throw out there too, is these new Bosch systems can be paired. I don't know if you've seen any of my videos on Bosch, uh, but they have, uh, inverter systems that now can be paired with 24 volt standard systems, you know, so your Honeywell 9,000 or whatever. And, uh, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Eberhardt, you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about the nine thousand thing that we were talking about um, with it running the backup heat too often. But anyway, so if you do one of these Bosch um, inverter systems, they're saving even more. And the good thing about the Bosch system versus, say, even a single stage Daikin or a two stage Daikin, whatever we've got here, uh, is not only are they more efficient, but that all that system cares about is what the coil temperature is. So it's going to monitor that suction pressure coming back and ramp up and down and save energy because of that. And uh, with the, we're pairing it with mobile home furnaces. I'm telling you, we've had customers with electric bills in the winter time, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 for a small little trailer. You know, they're talking about a thousand, 1200 square foot trailer and they'll have like a, a stinking $500 electric bill and we put one of these systems in and it drops dramatically less than $200 a month. You know, they're saving hundreds of dollars a month. Um, everything on my install was sealed inside. You just can't see it on the outside. I apologize for not making that clear. No, yeah, no problem, pal. Uh, I'm just pointing out things that, uh, folks, you know, may not think about when they're doing it. Uh, I kind of figured that to be honest with you, the more I looked in the picture, uh, because it wouldn't have passed code originally if they would have done that. Um, so it's actually, as I said, uh, not a bad looking install or deal. Um, you don't want your heating and air guys painting stuff anyway. I was going to say they could have painted that wood plenum, but uh, you don't want them painting your stuff. Uh, heat pumps are cheaper than gas heat. That's a loaded question. Um but I'll answer it like this. I did a video where we talked about some of the ways you can, you know, change uh, your heating and, and save money. And I'll say this here in Virginia, I've got customers that have natural gas furnaces. So they live in an area where they get natural gas. And I've got customers that have LP gas. So they have liquid propane. They'll have a truck come to their house and deliver that gas. And, uh, what they'll, what they'll usually do is if they have natural gas, it's less expensive. It has, it, it doesn't go up and down as much in price. And um, it's, it's just less expensive than propane. So they'll do a straight AC. So a lot of our customers in cities, and even if you go further north, they don't even know what a heat pump is. You can't even buy them. I was talking to somebody in Long Island the other day and uh, they were saying, I can't, I can't even, you know, I can't even get a heat pump if I wanted one. And um, so it, it, in other words, so the point is if you have natural gas, you're, you don't care about burning gas on a mild day, but if you have propane gas, you do because it, it's at times it'll have spikes and it'll be expensive and all this stuff. You got to have somebody deliver it to your house and they'll do a, what's called a dual fuel system. They'll have a heat pump outside with their gas furnace as their backup heat. And on mild days, they're burning electricity, not gas. You know, they're running on heat pump 
and warming their home. And then if it gets super cold outside, then their furnace is there to help. So not sure if that answers your question there, Bible bloopers, but um, hopefully that helps. Uh, if you come across this, we're going to do this again, maybe, you know, if I get some folks sending me some pictures of their systems, we'll do this again. Um, it's pretty fun for me. Um, and uh, th this is something that if you, you know, a lot of heat and air guys do all the time anyway, they'll, um, you know, a lot of Facebook groups, for example, some of the guys will post pictures of their install and they'll say, you know, what do you think guys? And, you know, the guys will say, well, you could have done this better. You could have done that better. I think ultimately uh, it's there's something to be said for not being sloppy and, you know, doing it clean and all that stuff. But some of these things can actually affect the efficiency. It can affect, you know, the performance of the system and things like that. And then obviously you want things to be up to code and and safe. So uh, I, I Hope that helps. If you, uh, again, if you want to send me pictures of your unit and you come across this, please do send it to that new email. That, that email is only for this only. I, you know, for, for now, it doesn't, I'm not going to use it for anything else. So other than that, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, we'll do this again. Thank you.